Hello, everyone. Thanks to the good folks over at O'Reilly Media, we will be giving away a free pass to OSCON 2015 in Portland. To enter, just send us an email at show at thecloudcast.net between now and Friday, July 10th, and tell us about your open source journey. Most interesting story wins. And even if you don't win, use the code CLOUD20 and you'll get a 20% discount on your registration. Thanks for listening, and now, on to the show. Cloudcast Media presents, from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is The Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to another episode of the Cloudcast. We're coming to you live from uh, DockerCon 2015 here in San Francisco, and we've got an old friend of the show uh, back today. We've got uh, John Willis, um, formerly of Socket Plane, now of Docker fame. How are you doing, John? Good, good. So, so tell us a little bit before we even kick off. Like, what was Socket Plane, and why did Docker kind of suck them up so quick because there, you know there's probably a, a lot of folks out there that didn't even know about socket plane and then they were gone. <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's a funny story. Um, I think we did. A, I might have be uh, repeating some of the discussion we had on the last podcast, but who cares, right? Uh, but I'll keep it short. The um, <laughs> I um, you know I, I was at Instratius, right, and we had that multi cloud management solution, and we, we sold that to Dell. And, you know, and I, 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 was, I hung around for Dell for a little while, but, you know, I, I'm just not a big company guy, right? So, um, and I was really getting bored with just general cloud, right? You know, just cloud this, cloud that, IAS pass. And I really wanted something to do. And I, I actually ran into this young gentleman who worked at the University of Kentucky, Brent Salisbury, who had been running OpenFlow in production for three years when I met him on um, NSF grant, right? Like, so, and, and he just kind of schooled me on SDN and, you know, why this was important and not the fluff stuff, right? Like the, the big stories of Nasira getting sold to VMware, right? That's a, you know, it's a big deal, but, but Brent really had some real insight of all this. So we started this relationship, got me very interested in DevOps and networking. So I started really spending, I spent about a year with like Barclays and some really big companies that were trying to implement, um, kind of came in the door of networking for, for DevOps or DevOps for networking, but wound up very thrown deeply in SDN discussions, you know. NSX versus Nuage. And, and I, I got to sit firsthand at these large financial institutions where I would watch these bake-offs happen, and I'd be able to sit in the room and watch all the differences and why this would work. And so ongoing conversation with Brent. He moves over the Red Hat. He works on the SCN team there, um, on the CTO team, under a gentleman named Madhu Venkapal. And um, they were getting a little bit bored with Open Daylight <laughs> and uh, without myself getting in trouble. And they started pinging me about, hey, you started a couple of companies. What, you know, what if we were going to do this? And we'd have a long conversation. It would end. And at one point, they pinged me and said, we're serious. And we sat down. We started thinking about what are the really cool things about, um, about SDN. And, um, and it really was that micro-segmentation. So if you heard all the discussion yesterday about micro-segmentation, right, that um, – the, the, that's the reality. Like, there's a lot of fluff in SDN. I think SDN has to have a, a revision too. All right, long story short, we basically decided that micro segmentation and containerization was a killer app because at the density that you will see that we will see, you know, the expectation is when the enterprise gets into this large scale, the density of compute will just destroy a normal network solution. You know, certainly a bridge network. Um, and um, and so we sat down and we, we and it wasn't really hard to do because those guys have been working on Open vSwitch for literally two years. I mean, Madhu and Kapal started the project in Cisco, right? And so so we were like this soccer play. Why is it so fast? Right? Literally, I mean, within uh, we basically got our first round of funding, a seed round fund, like in November. And I remember over the Christmas holidays, Madhu just beating the dog out of me because we wanted to put a tech preview out. <laughs> And we put yep. a tech preview it, out, and I'll tell it you right It came out like Christmas Eve yeah, or New oh, yeah. Year's yeah, Eve. Yeah, or... <laughs> like, like, I love I Madhu. That. He's the most <laughs> awesome guy, but he, like, he, like, he's serious. You work on a project with that man. You, you are going to be busy. Yeah. You, know, you either get out, get out of Dodger. Yeah. Like, I, I specifically remember the timing of the release yeah, of that Yeah, it was video. crazy. And I had to do – I did all the videos. And, and so the end result was we created overlay networks, a multi-host overlay network for Docker. Yep. And I'm sitting there running a LAMP stack. With, uh, on three different Docker hosts, 
connecting HA proxy, MySQL on the second host, uh, I mean, uh, WordPress apps on the second host, all containers, and they're all talking to each other with no linking, no port mapping. Like, this is it, right? Uh, and um, I, I think that that probably really caught the eyes of the Docker folk, right? Like, when, you know, like, they, they'd been kind of struggling with how do you do multi-host, you know, how do we offer overlay support like VXLAN? And we, like, from the time anybody heard about us, Less than a month Just and a half. The problem. We've got a demo yeah. of something nobody really. You know, I mean, there's other people doing it, but we were doing it with, in, in the way that VMware talks about micro segmentation. I mean, yep. it, we were delivering a real micro SDN solution, and uh, and it just escalated from there, right? Like the we got we got an offer for a term sheet, like like the the whole from seed to term was basically less than two months, yep. and and I I just we just started having more serious conversations with Ben and Solomon and. And they loved Madhu. I mean, I brought Madhu, and Madhu got on the whiteboard, and like it was all over. The minute Madhu got on the whiteboard for those guys, <laughs> I think we had, you know, I mean, it was good. It was good, Mary. It was right for us. We were, it would have been a battle. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's the story. It was, uh, you know, we just wanted to solve a very specific problem, which is kind of micro segmentation, multi host, multi host container networking. Sure. Yeah. And, and and yesterday you saw the announcement, right? Like yeah. that's that's yeah. what we that was our intent. Yeah, and it's all. I mean, it, it's all sort of. You know, at a high level, it's called Docker networking. At a more technical level, it's all sort of lib network, right? Mm-hmm. It's within this this library. Um, just at a at a high level, because we've had some folks who, that come on and talk about SDN. Like you said, people have different things. This isn't a sort of centralized controller thing. This is all yeah. totally distributed. Yeah. Um, so you don't have those. Well, in theory, those big scalability problems that the centralized yeah. controller things have, right? You know, I, I'm I'm a ridiculous fanboy of Madhu Venkapali. If you don't, yeah. if you haven't caught that, you will know that by the end of this podcast. But um, you know, so so we to answer that question, we hey here he is. Um, so we went ahead and we were doing a David and Goliath story, right? Like yep. we were going to go right at OMV switch and uh, and um, and just go after that. And then when we got acquired by Docker, like well, it's a bigger picture, yep. right? You have got Cisco, you have got NSX, you have got Weave, you have got you know, there was a lot of solutions. So um, to my frustration, I had to take a back seat for a little while. Well, these guys, Madhu, introduce yourself. Yeah, so so r- real quick for those listening out there, a, a live edition plus one but yeah, on the podcast as we're going here. So I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 go ahead. No, 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 for you guys. no come yeah. on, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Madhu Venugopal. Uh, I lead the networking division in Docker. Uh, so I used to be John's colleague right here when we were doing Soccer Plane. So we had an awesome time, and now we're having an awesome time at Docker now. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we, I mean, we literally. Just started. John was yeah. on the show a couple months ago. He was kind of giving us some background, and it's cool that you can join us and start to dig into some of this stuff. So, so. Yeah, yeah, so we were talking about the SDN, and I'll bring in your opinion here in a minute. But so the question was: people talk about SDN. What I was trying, we were going through the evolution of socket plane, and we got to a point where we got acquired. And I was just starting explaining that when we got acquired, it was more of try to build a model, so not just what socket plane was trying to do, but to, to fit for everybody. And so, so that. That took three months, right? So three months, as of yesterday, right, what you saw is a model of delivery that was exactly what we wanted to provide, but now is open and compatible for, um, for all the players. Yeah. So anybody, the, the whole, and we'll get into the kind of how the live network works and the abstraction and the awesomeness of it, but the beauty now is what we were trying to solve, we stepped back, Madhu and his team solved this now, not just for Socket Plane, Open vSwitch, but for any of the vendors in the vision that we saw from the, what I was describing earlier about how we thought about containers and how it had to be solved at scale, now that architecture is in place. And, and Madhu, what, what was the quote you have for about what, what you want to make networking? Uh, I think it's, you you got to do it. You got to do it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not corny. It's, All it's, right, it's, I'll do that. So, uh, so uh, this is my favorite tagline these days, right, is that we will do the networking what Docker did for compute. Essentially, right? Uh, so this is not something which I am trying to, you know, as a nice way marketing say, stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I truly, truly believe in that, uh, especially because of my background, right? So I used to be working for Cisco for a very long time, and you guys all know Cisco networking, solar equipments, a hardware company, right? Yep. Uh, with switches and routers sitting way inside a closet, while application is running somewhere outside, which I don't even know what an application is, right? Right. So slowly in the past decade, we saw start seeing why application is the king, right? So the networking was so far away from applications, right? We are always trying to snoop things to 
realize what application could do, right? Then came VM. Again, VM abstraction was really good from a computer standpoint. But networking, again, is a virtual machine abstraction where it's another machine. Networking is somewhere, right? Again, it was trying to do analytical-based stuff, right? But the moment I saw Docker as an application delivery platform, right, things really changed from in my own view because Docker virtualizes the applications and the application is so close to networking at this point. This is the first time ever of our lifetime, actually my lifetime, I have seen networking so close to applications and application expressing their own requirements to networking in a much better way, right? So I'm sure if you look at the Docker notes, you see that there's no better abstraction than Docker today where networking can be actually made use of so thoroughly, right? So we saw that, we started the company right away, there's no stepping back, yeah. right? We thought we'll do it using the technology that we know best, using, using you know, water technology we know. And the vision aligned so well with the Docker folks, right? Then we merged hands together. So next three, four months, we have a solution now right. called Lib Network, which actually delivers on the exact same promise that we started on, where applications can talk exactly with the requirement of the networking platform. And uh, it just happens like magic. Right? That's, that's yeah. the, I mean, the beauty. I mean, so, I mean, when we first talked about doing just um, kind of, um, uh, I'll just keep calling it micro segmentation, but a variant of SDN yeah. with containers. Like, like I just knew implicitly that was a good thing, right? I knew density. And what I didn't understand, it took a little while for Madhu kind of driving this point of, you know, I we all understand what Docker has done for development, right? And compute, right? right? Yep, yep. In that it's completely removed any barrier to entry, right? The idea that, that uh, you know, I mean, even like our open stacks and our, uh, no disrespect to the Cloudcast, but, <laughs> but the open stack and, and the, um, you know, the VMwares of the world, there was still some human friction, right? Like, in other words, I, I still had to kind of think about the VMDK and the conversion and, the, yeah. and what about the flow and where did it, it was, go? It, it, it was, no matter what, it, it may have automated it slightly, but it, there was still a but lot But there was the still it was, it, was, it wasn't portable, wasn't consistent. And then the containers yeah. came yeah. around and it was this instant, like, complete separation from an application, what they want yep. and how it gets delivered. I don't care where you want to put it, whether it's integration, whether it's smoke testing, whether it's production. The yep. thing that blew me away was Madhu started saying, like, John, we can do this with networking. And, and, and CNM and Live Network are really, uh, you know, uh, to, we're going to try to get people's head around this. It is really uh, the goal mm-hmm. that we had to actually, and now delivered as part of Docker, of this kind of model where if you think about the abstraction, and I'll let Madhu explain the abstraction layers, that we've created, a, you, know, you know, dare I say, um, I, I like to say immutable delivery is the killer, you know, killer model for Docker, uh, kind of an immutable network delivery okay. um, because of the, the abstraction and the way this works with the application. Because never has to now worry about the network, whether it's in test, prod, development. These are all just abstractions that are hidden. Yep. And, and I, I've never seen that in my lifetime. So, model. so we, we sat in, uh, you, you guys both gave a session yesterday. You mostly gave it, Madhu. You kind of kicked it off, John. Um, very good session, uh, really well attended. The one thing that struck me, so I'm, I'm sort of an old-timey networking guy too. I worked at Cisco for a long time. The, I don't know if the concepts are so different, but the terminology is different, right? So in old-timey, it was, you know, you, you had physical boxes you thought about. You thought about ports. You thought about port groups and uplinks and stuff. And, and you guys were talking yesterday about sort of endpoints, that were kind of services and you talked about sandboxes and you talk as you guys are talking to network people. So you go and talk to your peers and you're trying to explain the new sort of Docker networking concepts. What are the, how do you help them bridge this thing? I mean, like we never talked about network namespaces in, in the old world and we didn't like, what's the, what's the way for the networking teams or even the development teams that like, how do they learn this stuff? What do you guys find works? Uh, It's an excellent question, right? So, uh, Docker as a as a solution, right, must cater to both developers yep. and operator, operations, right? It's 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 it, it has to, right? It has come come to that far now. So, the terminologies are always a complicated story, right? Mm-hmm. Just use take an example of a port, right? When I was working for Cat six K, to me a port means that port which I connect physically into this one, right? You come to this world and say port, to them port is layer four port. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. Yep. Right? So, terminology is complicated. Yeah, seriously, right? So 
every single term that we try to use has some meaning to that right so it is not easy to just use one word and say hey this is the word that everyone must follow right it's extremely complicated even for example as i said oh we call it endpoint as services right yeah it's a service endpoint right so we are trying to address both this world right of developers and operations yeah right and essentially yesterday stock essentially if you look at it, the endpoints and services and sandboxes they are actually meant for the plugin developers okay. right uh those are actually hidden behind the scenes essentially yeah. right but once you go into the plugin development the the developers for example cisco is developing their own plugins for mm-hmm. docker vm is developing their own plugins right the developers who develop they understand abstraction really really well once cross that abstraction apis they talk about all right now i'm going to create a bgp based routing channel okay and uh, cisco of course say that right uh, once you go to vmware they say no i want to use ovn based controller right and i'm going to use vx internals i'm going to use ovs db so on and so forth right so the abstraction about how we are going to reach the networking guys is the driver's responsibility right okay. so that, that's exactly the layer we're talking about here where docker as a project lib network as a project is trying to provide that layer between developers world and the operators world and the drivers is exactly what is going to really mean to the real networking nerds okay so cool. so so they don't shouldn't be freaking out that the stuff doesn't make sense it's going to it's going to start to get back into the language they know they but, should but not they'll have yeah. native they'll have native plugins either they'll use the native docker stuff or some of the vendors that they you know know and love and so forth it, exactly forward. okay so cool. even the native docker plugin for mm-hmm. so we have a driver called ola driver mm-hmm. right once you enter intercept into the ola driver category you'll start talking about vx lands gotcha. you talk about rp trees how you will populate it you talk about layer 3 node distribution we talk about eventually consistent store so everything that networking guys understand we talk about exactly the same stories inside the driver but just above the layer the above layer is for application guys developers who has to listen to what they know right. they, they understand services they understand apps they understand sandboxes Right. Gotcha. So, that makes sense. Makes sense. And, and we do just one I think an important thing is we think about the old. The way you were explaining to me is that the oh, the old model. Sorry, the way you were explaining to me the, the old model. We're very coupled from the container to the network, and now we've got this kind of nice decoupled model. Right. That that uh, and you know people are like oh it's a big deal. What what have you really done here? And and if you could describe the the kind of the oh yeah 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 so. Uh, One of the problems that we used to face in Docker networking for 1.6 version beyond is that network is a kind of a static entity where it's a single host solution, right? right? So you launch a container, container comes with a networking container name, namespace, and the namespace stays in that host. And that's it, right? We use Linux natting technology and then port mapping to do the actual translation from traffic from container to the external world. But now with the new world of multi host networking and multi host you know cluster based solutions we need a better abstraction because of mobility right so my services can be launched anywhere i should be able to access anywhere and one container might go down and this with seamless mobility the services should be stay up and running anywhere else and more importantly docker's philosophy of build ship and run where developers should be able to build a software just you give the software to the operators just work in operations right it's a very hard problem really hard problem right especially in networking networking has always been this thing where you no know, oh developers don't understand networking operations team you scale it up operation team says oh god you guys cannot have this solution to change the port numbers they go back and change application back and forth there's a tug of war there are there right now with this new abstraction that we have we have an abstraction called service abstraction right that's a that's an abstraction missing so far So what we what we do is services is where the drivers allocate resources, right? For example, drivers like Cisco's and VMware's and us, we allocate resources based on whether it is IP address allocated by us or an IPAM that is provided by another company or whatever, right? Yeah. So the drivers allocate resources and assign it to the service, and the applications developed by developers containers attach to these services, right? Now the container may come and go, but the resources are static. Right. So once right. it's just static, operators love it, right? You don't want to have this. You don't. <laughs> right. Right. So that, that's the whole point. So the the new abstraction actually exactly fits the requirement for the developers. They don't have to deal much into networking, 
and it's great for operators because they know exactly what they're dealing with. Yeah, I think it's dynamic. It's a combination of, of pre-wiring for operations, if you will, of, you know, having things set up and, and wire it once and walk away like they used to do. They used to do. Right. Dynamic, right. dynamic wiring. Right. Right. But at the same time, still have the flexibility to scale up, scale down and do dynamic things on, on the back end. Absolutely. Yes. And, and developers don't to care about any of the developers care about services. They call it services a DB. Yeah. They'll say, I want to connect to the DB. Right. And since we have embedded service discovery, now the, the cool thing about this one and all is we have embedded service discovery inside Docker networking stack, right? So that means we map from name to IP and Max and whatnot behind the scenes. Yep. So developers care only about the service names. Yeah. Right? So I was I was curious. That was I'm glad you went there because that was my next question. Was like, uh, we get the networking stuff, right? It's IP addresses and routes and MAC addresses and stuff. And then a lot of folks, especially with containers, it's, it's service discovery, it's Swarm or it's console or dead CD. Like, help us connect the dots. How does the network stuff, which has to go find how to route the packets, and then these service discovery things, which are you know DNS names and stuff, like, how do they connect? What's the... Yeah, isn't it amazing, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, that's the magic, right? That's the magic. And the reason <laughs> I love this one is because I was there to do all this in Lib Network. It's, it's, it's okay. really, really amazing, right? You are absolutely right. So when it comes to application layer, they don't really care about IP addresses and MAC addresses right. and ports, right? right? Layer 4 ports, none of those, right? But they want seamless connectivity. And, then, and hence, we have a lot of solutions out there for service discovery, for you know, clustering and all those stuff, right? So here we are actually, what we're doing is we're bridging these two worlds together, right? And that's exactly what we discussed before, where Lib Network provides this abstraction between drivers, right, and services, okay? So what, what we do essentially in Lib Network is none of the drivers need to worry about mapping between the IP addresses to the service names. Lib Network takes care of those mapping technology, right? So, and hence, the drivers are essentially network plumbing, right? So we'll, uh, when, when somebody wants to create a service, we let the driver know that, hey, there's a driver name, a, a, a service name DB has been created. So now, can you please allocate resources for me on this driver, mm-hmm. right? So if, what happens is, the driver allocates, as I said, IP address from their IPM solutions, right? They might insert IP route entries, Right. right, because they want to do policy-based routing, so they can they can provide all the resources they they think is important for deploying this service on this box, right? So they provide the drivers, and what we do in Lib Network is we take that, map it to the service, and more importantly, we map it to the platform where the service is running. So if it's a Windows machine, we'll use appropriate Windows calls to do the route programming. If it's a Linux machine, we insert IP route rules, IP table rules, so on and so forth, right? Now. As you know, as you can see already, Windows guys are upcoming in the container, container world. So now the container application being developed can be developed one time yeah. and run anywhere, not just on the compute side, but also on the networking side. And Lib Network actually does this translation between the application world of services to the networking world of IP routes and MAC addresses and whatnot. Sure, sure. Now, and that's pluggable too, right? So that's the beauty. We've got a kind of batteries included service discovery and but we can plug you can plug yeah in. we can plug in using just like you can plug in any of your network drivers you can plug in well uh, and, any and, of your... and, and to me it's a little crazy so i mean you guys were talking about the time frame that you built all this stuff i mean it was literally like months yeah and and you compare that to some of the the big network vendors who who built you know like it took x number of years for nice to do this or cisco aci guys and and now that you can take advantage of some of these tools that maybe weren't considered networking before but are now relevant you know some of the, the um, key value stores and the stuff that basically is swarm and that like that's powerful, right? Because you've got to marry those two worlds together. So the, the timing that that happens is pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing, and, and I had to thank the the stalwarts today, right? I mean, I call it the SDN framers, right? The SDN framers have actually gone through this effort of bringing this. Think about it, right? Networking and software. They are like what, right? <laughs> so right. these guys for the past few years spent that effort to bring this knowledge to the community. Now people accept that. And we're just standing on their shoulders, right? Able to deliver them. So it's, I feel lucky that these guys actually did the hard work and we are enjoying the benefit of it. Sure. We also kind of, it's a timing thing too, right? Like if we were to start a socket plane and tried to do what we were doing as another kind of solution for OpenStack, right? Again, no disrespect to the yeah. OpenStack community. Yeah. The complexity of doing that would have not taken two months. It would have taken a year, right? And so we get into Docker and networking is, you know, 
let's say it, it's as nascent as get. I mean, the, everybody's like, Docker's great, it's awesome, but uh, the networking. So Madhu gets this unbelievable mold of clay without any of all these other things like, well, let's, we have to worry about OpenStack, and we have to worry about this architecture, we don't have to worry about this architecture. Yeah. They were able to start from scratch and in, in play out an architecture based on the shoulder of giants who have already set the path of how this should work. So I think the idea that stepping right into where Docker was with networking with Madhu and his team's experience, um, it just, you know, they're an incredible team, but it was just easy to build something on a new model where we didn't have to ask people's permission. Yeah, yeah that right? makes sense. So let me ask you this before we wrap up, like kind of a last question, because everyone, everyone loves ownership at the end of the day. And one of the, the, the things I've heard more and more recently is the, you know, developers own inside the container and operations own outside the container, you know? And so I'll kind of throw it back to you guys. Agree, disagree. And how does all of the networking throw a wrench into all of that? Right. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I'll let Madhu answer the general networking part of that, but um, I think it's um, the, in general, there are models of operation, right, that will fit, and there's no one size fits all. I do yep. think, you know, if um, we don't have enough time to do my whole immutable delivery discussion, but I think as companies like Gilt and Yelp and who are following an immutable model, and, the, the, and not saying this is perfect for everybody, but this is a model that's working for some people, in that the developers actually take full responsibility of the stack, right? And in that model, I agree. Like, the developers now pretty much build everything from the base OS to the middleware to the app. And, they, you know, the old DevOps adage, the developers were pagers in production, right? And, and so now they own that immutable delivery all the way through. So in that model, then, yes, I think that then ops becomes the architects of hygiene for delivery, the architects of orchestration, the, the architects, uh, more importantly, of, of security and compliance of what's in an image and, and where they where you get those images, who builds them, sure. where do you build them from. Yep. But but for networking, I'd like to hear your answer on, on that part of the question. I want to say about control, right? See, it's not about the control, I think. Right? Personally, I believe, right? What I believe is it's it's joint model, right? So what developers want is seamless. Everything should be working seamless. That's all they want, right? It's not about control. It's, it's not about, hey, you know what? Don't put artificial limitations on my own applications. I, I want to explore. I want to do some artific- make cool stuff, right? And operations guys, don't please don't stop me from doing that. That's all they want. Operations guys, don't do some crazy stuff, right? So we have a compliance model to follow, right? So give us enough control over the solution that you are trying to, trying to deploy, right? And we have seen already before OpenStack, before VMs, it's impossible to you know, deliver application on data centers, right? The moment you see self-deployable applications, you know what, I, I go to OpenStack, I, I create my own VMs, I launch the application, boom, it works, right? So we are, we are actually turning towards the same path here, where as Docker, as a company, as a project, the most important thing is for us the user experience, right? So end user must really be thrilled using this platform or for delivering solutions, right? So, it's not, to me, I don't see it as a control problem. It's about whether you'll be able to solve both these guys' you know, requirements, essentially. So, for developers, they should not worry about networking at all. That's, that's our, my main objective. objective is networking should not be bothered by networking. So, yep. Sorry, operations should not be bothered by networking, mm-hmm. right? Same time, provide all the controls for the operators to provide their you know, security and compliance right there. Yep. That's the goal. All right. Good. Well, um, well, guys, listen, I uh, want to wrap it up. Uh, I know you guys are super busy. Walking the halls is, I, I know for you, is nearly impossible. It was kind of yeah. why you were a few minutes late because you probably can't go more than 10 feet without answering questions. So uh, so first off, thanks for being on. I know you're, you're super busy. Where can folks um, you know, find more about what you're doing, whether it's you know, they want to follow you or they want to follow the projects? Uh, so I'm extremely active in a project called Docker slash LibNetwork. It's in GitHub. Yep. Uh, or if you want to chat with us live, we are in Docker slash network, Docker dash network in IRCs. Cool. Right? So that's where we would reach us. <clears throat> and you're traveling the world doing DevOps so days. Watch Galoop on Twitter. And, uh, you know, so I've done, actually, just um, for those people that I just want to catch up on Docker in general, I've been running, I've got a 12 part series I've done on the Docker blog, taking you from basic installation to, um, to just volumes. It walks you through pretty much everything you need to know from a getting started. There are 10. Uh, 
20 minute videos. Um, okay. Just go Dr. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, so yeah, they're really, really fun. Really good. In yeah, fact, we, the next one I'm doing is we're going to, he's going to beat me up <laughs> if I don't get the live network one out today. Yeah, so. yeah he's yeah. going to do a great one for so, me. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so we've got the links in the show notes already. So good, yeah, go, good. go check those out. All very right. good. Yeah. So, well, guys, thank you very much for being on. And, uh, folks, we're going to wrap this one up. Um, so, uh, as always, you can find us uh, on Twitter at the Cloudcast Net or on the web at uh, thecloudcast.net, all the social media stuff, all the YouTube links. So, uh, for John and for Madhu, guys, thanks for being on. And uh, we're going we're gonna to keep going on, uh, on DockerCon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. That's yeah, awesome. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media. 